Boy, it's a crazy time to be alive, isn't it? Crazy. We are so advanced as a society, as a people, that we can send people to space. Yet there's millions and millions of people with no electricity, no running water, shit, no clean water, much less running. In some parts of the world, you still gotta go walk five miles, fight off some fucking crocodiles, <laughs> offer a bucket of water infested with malaria or some third world shit that doesn't even exist here because we killed it. We have the technology, as they say. We have the know-how. But those of us who don't have to deal with uh, motherfucking malaria or whatever are basically like, fuck those third world people. <laughs> fuck them for being stupid enough to live in a place where that's a thing. But then at the same time, we're like, no, 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 no. I didn't mean move in here. See, this is my house, so... Yeah, fuck you, go back to malaria land and die, and quit wasting all my valuable commercial time. I need to see things that I might or might not want, but definitely don't need. And I don't want to see any more ads telling me I could save you for a dollar a day. I have a buck, you're not getting it. Fuck you for reminding me I'm a shitty person every time I want to watch a fucking TV show. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. It's a crazy time. We live in the most famous democracy in recorded history. Nobody votes. Nobody fucking votes. Everybody's like, I don't feel like my vote will matter. Well, if you were the only fucking idiot who felt that way, then it wouldn't. But there's more people in America who don't vote than people that do. That's crazy. In ancient Greece, the founder of democracy, and in ancient Rome, the refiners of democracy, two out of three people were slaves, couldn't vote. And even if you were free, you weren't likely to get to vote unless you were male and you held land and title. You had to be rich and white, basically. America was supposed to be different. We were supposed to be better. Let's let everybody vote, fuck it. But nobody does it, even though it's a precious gift. I think it's because of this two-party system. See, it doesn't matter which side of the coin you're voting for. It's all the same fucking thing, right? That's why nobody votes. Well, I mean that, and because we're lazy and disorganized. But we should have more choices. I want a party that provides totally free health services to all its citizens. If you're sick and need treatment, you should get it. That's not a crazy idea. In fact, it's the standard for most first world countries. People say shit like, oh, we won't be able to pick our doctors anymore. You don't get to pick your fucking doctor now. If you did, everybody would be going to one guy, right? If you had your choice, wouldn't you go to the best doctor? Yeah, so would everybody else. You go to the doctor who's closest to you at the time you need help. Most of us, anyway. Some people still have family doctors, I guess, which is fucking weird. You going for a prostate exam? Oh, you're a lot tighter than your father was. What the fuck? So many disturbing thoughts go through your head all at once. So many disturbing thoughts. Just when you think it can't get any worse, the doc's like, I wonder if that's just from old age. That's fucked up. But yeah, bro, free health care. And legalize weed at the federal level. It's been far too long to legalize weed already. It's legal everywhere, any amount, whatever purpose you want to use it for. You can stick it up your dad's loose asshole if you want to. America doesn't care. We no longer discriminate or harass marijuana users. And that, of course, includes hemp and hemp products. But don't call me a liberal. I firmly believe in gun owners' rights. I think you should be able to own any type of weapon that the police are allowed to own. Hear me out on this. If nobody's allowed to have guns anymore, the police shouldn't be armed either. See, the reason that we need guns is the same reason that the cops do. To protect ourselves from armed criminals. So if the cops need the AR-15s to do the job, then we need AR-15s to do the job. If the cops can get the job done with just shotguns and six shooters, then that's all anybody should be able to have. It's a good system. It's a smart system. Which is why you'll never hear any stupid politician propose it. There's too much money in guns. Police departments have received $35 billion in grants from the Department of Homeland Security. You know what for? To buy up all the leftover war stock from the Department of Defense. It's true. Look it up. Ask your phone. That's what I do. I swear to fucking Christ, my IQ has dropped 10 points since I got a smartphone. I swear to Christ. I don't have to know anything anymore. My phone knows everything, and I own it. It does what I tell it to. It's like my phone is God, and I own God. It's great. You ever try praying, but then don't get an answer? 
or you do get an answer, but it's like two weeks later, and you're like, what the fuck took you so long, God? I don't even care about that shit anymore. It's like two fucking weeks ago. My entire life has changed. I never have that problem with my phone. It's instantaneous. I ask, it answers. It's fucking great, bro. But I do feel dumber, though. Or I guess less knowledgeable would be the correct term. I carry around less facts in my head now. I'm like a Christian. I have nothing against Christianity specifically. I don't like any kind of organized religion. I think faith should be a personal thing. It's just that I don't have enough knowledge about any other religions to properly make fun of them. But being raised in the Christian church and then comparing it to other religions as an adult, I can tell you this for sure. All religions have one thing in common. They all expect you to believe some ridiculous shit. Just straight up ridiculous shit. Let's look at the very first story in the Bible, Adam and Eve. First of all, if you believe that's a literal historical account of how Earth happened, you're a fucking idiot for so many reasons. Who recorded it? There weren't even any people for the first five days. Who's writing this shit down? But what if it was real? Let's pretend. Can you imagine being Adam, crafted by the hand of God? So no mother, no father, at this point not even a woman to argue with, I mean, uh, love. <laughs> Just you and God. And God says, this is Eden, I made this for you. You're alive because I gave life to you. And you're like, wow, Eden's awesome, bro, good job. <laughs> so what do you want to do? And God's like, oh, uh, actually it's nighttime, so... Jesus, I don't know, go to sleep or something until the sun comes back up. And that's why we're all supposed to sleep a third of our life away, because God didn't want to talk to Adam. We don't know why, the Bible doesn't say. Maybe Adam was a douchebag, we don't know. Maybe God's like that dad that's always disappointed in his son. I made you in my image, what's the fucking matter with you? What the Bible does say is that on the seventh day, God rested. What the fuck? God needs rest? Well, that explains natural disasters, I guess. You know God's waking up pissed, too. Are you fucking serious right now? Arrested for one day, now half of New Orleans is gone? So anyway, what's Adam do while God's uh, napping? The Bible says he starts naming shit. Bird! He's just shouting out sounds that he thinks are cool. Bird! He takes it to the show God, and he's like, hey God, check it out. Bird! And God's like, Jesus Christ, this is my only day off, Adam. What part of day off don't you understand? Adam just yells out, Bird again. So God tells him, yeah, great. Bird, whatever. Name shit whatever you want to. I don't care. Just leave me the fuck alone till tomorrow. Since we're imagining this from a Christian angle, we'll presume that it's what we now call Monday when God resumes his duties. So Adam's up with the sun Monday morning, pestering God with all the stupid one-syllable names that he named everything. And God's like, I need to make this douchebag someone else to bother so he'll leave me alone. And thus, God created Eve. I wonder if she was perfect, beautiful inside and out. Or if God just kind of half-assed it and created like a Lena Dunham type. Said, there you go, Adam, go fuck with that. But Adam thought he said, go fuck that. And for like the first two weeks, Adam and Eve barely spoke, just fucking each other in paradise. And it was magical. But then, like all new couples do, they made the mistake of having a real conversation. At which point Eve finds out what God already knew. This guy Adam, kind of a tool. But what the fuck is she supposed to do about it? He's literally the only guy on the planet. The only other person on the planet. So Eve doesn't even have the option to go and dyke. What's she supposed to do? So she keeps fucking them, but now they're fighting all the time. She's not happy. And now the devil sees a weakness in God's perfect system, and he exploits it. He visits Eve as a serpent and tells her, Eat from this tree that God said not to eat from, and you'll know things. And Eve's like, oh, what kind of things? And the serpent's like, shit, I don't know, good, evil, all that. Eve suddenly gets excited. She's like, well, I know how to get away from Adam. And the serpent's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Just eat the fucking apple. So Eve does. And our 
loving and righteous God curses everyone that'll ever be born ever to live in hardship because one bitch ate a piece of fruit. <laughs> Sounds fair. So Adam and Eve get booted from the garden. There's these two angels with swords of fire that block the only way back in. Adam's like, oh, this is just fucking great. How could this day get any worse? He goes, I'm pregnant. <laughs> so along come uh, Cain and Abel. Cain's a rancher, Abel's a farmer. They both have to sacrifice their best shit to God now to avoid damnation because their mom likes apples and thinks she knows everything. <laughs> but it's not exactly equal, is it? For Cain and Abel, I mean. If you grow veggies and shit, of course you're going to bring the best to God. The juiciest tomato, the brightest orange orange that you can find. But if you're Cain, you're in a different situation. Sacrifice times comes around and you got to decide who's going to get their throat slit and lit on fire while they bleed out. <laughs> so Cain looks around at all his animals and he goes, uh, okay, this mangy sheep over here probably going to die anyway. So I'll burn him up for God and, uh... Let's see, I need one more. Oh, 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 I got it. See, there's this particularly honorary goat that had bit him a few days back. So Cain, going the phrase, payback's a bitch, he slit the goat's throat and lit it on fire. There you go, guys, so we're good, right? See you next month? God's fucking pissed. Fuck no, we're not good. That major sheep gave me died of natural causes on the way over here, so he doesn't even count. And that fucking honorary ass goat bit me as soon as it got to heaven. Nah, I'm just assuming sacrificed animals get a free pass to heaven. It doesn't actually say that in the good book. Anyway, Cain ends up banished and goes off to start the Gentiles, which is what all of us are unless you're a Jew. Wait, what? Who the fuck you do that with? I thought everybody came from Adam and Eve. This story's got more holes than Swiss cheese, but if you're a creationist, you're supposed to take every word as fact. It's fucking ridiculous. It is fucking ridiculous. This story is obviously a metaphor. Jesus taught in parables, why wouldn't God do the same if they're supposed to be the same being? Jesus didn't usually say, do this, don't do that. No, he told you a story. A son gets an advance on his inheritance, then blows it all on booze and hookers, and when he's penniless and out of options, he goes back home to his rich daddy, who's not even mad at him. The father runs out to his son, my son, my son, who was once lost but is now found. And he throws him a fucking feast, and he gives him a couple of pretty young wives. All that shit. And at this point, you're thinking, you know what, Jesus? Forgetting this sounds awesome. Sign me up. And then you find out there's a catch. So you don't just get to be forgiven. You're also supposed to forgive. Fuck, you mean I have to be a caring, compassionate, decent human being? This sucks, Jesus. But then... You have one of those eureka moments, you know, where the little light bulb comes on and over your head. Wait, wait. Even if I don't forgive others, you'll still have to forgive me, right? If I ask you to? And Jesus is like, well, technically, yes, but... And you just cut him off right there. Cool, cool. So I'm going to just go be shitty now and think of only myself from now on. Love you, Jesus. See you in heaven. <laughs>